Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, my kindergarten, first grade, and second grade friends, whatever time you are watching this video. Um, I hope you guys liked The Color Monster. It's a really fun book, um, and it's a good way for us to remember um, the different emotions that there are and the ones that we might have. And then it's a good way to remember that color can represent emotions and that we can use color to express what our emotions are. Um, I know that while we're home, we are experiencing something different. This isn't exactly like summertime or spring break. This is when you would normally be in school and we don't know when we get to go back to school and that's kind of strange and um, you might just be dealing with stuff at home. So we kind of wanted to do um, some time where we could relate color, something that we went over last week, um, to the emotions that we might be experiencing. So what you and I are going to do is use the Color Monster book to do that. So glad you guys are here. Um, if you don't remember me, my name is Mrs. Took. And what we are going to be doing today is first starting off with a drawing of the color monster and a jar. If you remember in the book, um, he had all of these different jars that represented the feelings that were going on. So there's a jar for each different feeling or emotion, and then they colored each jar a different color based on what they were feeling. So we're going to draw a jar with the color monster. And um, what we're gonna do is do a really nice fancy jar. Okay, you guys are gonna do so great at this and I totally believe in you, okay? Now I'm gonna turn my paper so that it's vertical, okay? If you want to keep yours horizontal, that's totally fine, but I want mine to be vertical, all right? Now I would try to draw these things around the same size that I do, okay? So that you have um, enough space on your page and you're using the whole page. So even if you are doing yours horizontally, just be thinking about using the whole page, okay? Now, I'm gonna start at the bottom. So if you see my paper, I'm starting at the bottom and I'm gonna start in this area right here. This is where I want my monster to be, okay? My color monster. And then the jar is gonna take up the main part of the page, okay? So what we're gonna do is start off with a line that is a zigzag line, okay? Going from here down to there, okay? Then we're gonna do one on the other side with the jagged edges going the other way, okay? Now these are the sides of our color monster, okay? He's got some zigzag sides because he's a little furry or something. Then we're gonna do a diagonal line going up and a diagonal line going up. Now remember, if you are someone that likes to go a little bit slower with your drawings, you can always pause these videos or rewind them if you need to. That's one thing that's great about doing school online. So if I'm going too fast for you, you can just pause, okay? Now, we have those two diagonal lines and we want to do another diagonal line that's shorter than the diagonal line we started with on each side. We're making his little ears. And then we're gonna connect those with a horizontal line right there, okay? I'm gonna go over mine with a marker later um, so it's easier for you guys to see. Um, but those are our basic lines right there. Now he has this awesome, awesome unibrow. So right here, I'm gonna put a dot in the middle of the kind of forehead area. And that's where we're gonna start our eyebrow. So we're gonna make this a unibrow, which means two eyebrows that are actually one eyebrow. They go all across the face above the nose. They aren't two separate ones. Um, but what we're about to do is true for a regular eyebrow too. So on this side, we want to create a bunch of lines. This is similar to what's called hatching, okay? We wanna use a bunch of lines to create a texture that looks like hair. You guys know texture, it's one of the elements of art. Then we're gonna go the other direction. So lines um, going this way are going to help create the other side of the unibrow, okay? Hair um, in the direction that it grows is the best way to draw it, okay? So if you ever wanna draw hair, you want your lines to be drawn in the direction that hair grows, okay? So if you were to draw like a person and they had long hair, you wouldn't wanna start at the bottom and go up. You'd want to start at the top of their head and go down, okay? So we've got our awesome little unibrow. And then I'm gonna do mine um, kind of a happy, okay? So he's got his eyes closed. I'm just drawing kind of how he looks in the book. So that's how they do his eyes closed. And then he's got this awesome smile. So there's two U's right there for his smile, and or for his eyes. And then we're gonna do a big U for his smile. And you can make yours as big as you want to. And then he has two little shapes that create teeth, 
Now I bet you can guess what shape we're gonna use for a tooth. We're gonna use a triangle. So if we wanted to use a regular tooth, we might do a square, um, but for some pointy, sharp teeth, we're gonna do triangles. So it looks like he's got two bottom teeth that are sticking out of his mouth, coming out in front. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a little arm. Okay, now his arms are very basic. They're just some lines that go next to each other. So we're gonna do that one right there. And then I'm gonna do one that's like that, okay? So we just have the two sides of his arms. And then his hands are very basic. He has four fingers on each hand. He has kind of a thumb-like thing. So I'm just creating a little, like a little curve right there. And then he has three fingers that look like that. He doesn't have super fancy hands. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. Those do not have to be perfect, my friends. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the bottom leg first. So I'm gonna draw uh, the bottom leg. They're both bottom legs. I meant the leg on this side. So I'm gonna draw a leg on this side and then I want that line to come below it but go longer, okay? So there's a space right here and that's gonna be the leg. So we have a top line and a bottom line that's longer than our top line because we're gonna use this to make a foot. So now I'm gonna do a line that's going out from that line, creates a little boxy corner here. And then he has three toes on each foot. So I'm just gonna do like three triangles and then connect them to that original line right there, okay? Then I'm gonna do another one right here coming from behind that one. And that one is too thick. We want these legs to match, right? So I'm gonna do it. Yeah, that looks better. We want that bottom line to extend so we can give him his feet. And then we're gonna do those three triangles again. So if you need to remember how I did it with the first one, you can totally pause and rewind. Now, for the bottom of him, his little spiky furry parts go underneath his leg. So you just see like the bottom of those pointies. And then he has these little fur lines on him like that. Very nice. Okay, so we've got our little monster and now we want to draw our jar, okay? So fix my papers there. So we have our little monster and we're gonna make our jar go behind him and take up the main part of our paper, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw the bottom of our jar to be next to our little monster guy. So we want this line to be curved, but we want it to be horizontal, okay? So it's gonna go side to side horizontal, but it's gonna be curved instead of straight. Okay, so I'm pretending that my line starts behind the monster because he's sitting up against the jar leaning on it. So I'm gonna do that, pretending I'm drawing a line there, and then I'm actually going to start my line right there. Okay, so I'm starting this line and I'm just gonna curve it over like that, okay? So we have the bottom of our jar and now the sides of our jar will be vertical lines, okay? So I'm gonna draw a vertical line going up right there. And then on the other side, I'm gonna guess that it would be about right here. I'm gonna draw a vertical line going up from there, okay? Now, what we're gonna do at the top here we're gonna curve, add a little curve on each side like this, okay? Now, what we wanna do is then come up. So I added small vertical lines, very, very small. And then we're gonna connect those with another slight curve. It won't be a very big curve, it'll just be a slight curve. So that means it's curved a little bit, but it's almost straight. And then we're gonna put what's called a cork in the top of our jar. So in the book, they have little corks that they put in the tops of the jars. So I'm gonna do a diagonal line coming from here, the edge of the jar, to there, and from here to there. So I have two diagonal lines coming out from those corners. And then I'm gonna connect those with another curved line. And then after that, you can pause here if you need to catch up. Then I'm gonna curve the other way right there, and that gives us the top of our jar. Now cork is um, a porous material, so it has all these little holes in it. Like we could pour water through cork somehow. Um, if it's a more dense cork, then that wouldn't work, but it's kind of like a really hard sponge is what it looks like. Um, if you have a bulletin board, um, that material that looks like orange and spongy but isn't 
is cork, okay? It's a, it's a cork board. A bulletin board is a cork board. So I just drew little kind of circles all over mine to make it look a little bit like cork. I could also do some like dots if I wanted to. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and go over mine with marker so that you can see it really, really well on your screen. I'm gonna start from the top down on mine so that I don't accidentally smudge ink with my hand. You can outline yours in marker, but you don't have to. I just like to do that in our videos so that you can really clearly see um, what we're doing. I know that sometimes the camera, or I mean, I'm using a good camera, but sometimes computer screens, or by the time it gets uploaded to YouTube, all that kind of stuff can mess with things. And I just wanna make sure that you guys can really see. So I do go over most of our stuff with marker just to make it really, really um, stark so that you guys can see it, okay? So I've got that cork outlined. Now I'm gonna do the rest of my jar, okay? And I'm gonna leave this part because I'm right-handed, so I don't wanna smear the ink while I'm working on my monster. So I'm just gonna quickly go over my monster. If you guys didn't finish drawing, this would be a good time to finish yours. Do my fun little eyebrow. Makes it look kind of silly, but I like it. Okay, now I'm gonna do this side. I'm gonna rotate this so I can draw that curve. There we go. Okay, so now we have our jar and our little color monster there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what we're going to do with this jar. Okay, so I'm going to pull out a second piece of paper here. I'm gonna set our jar right here. You don't need a second piece of paper for yours. I just wanna write some things out for you to see. But if you want to write these things out with me, you totally can, okay? So I'm going to get the second piece of paper right here and I'm gonna write out some words that we're gonna talk about. So in the book, he experienced some different feelings. So I'm gonna list out some feelings that we might be feeling right now. Hopefully, we might be feeling happy. And for our kindergarten and first grade friends, I'm gonna spell out these words. Remember, if you are writing these things out with me, you can pause the video if you wanna catch up. So we've got H-A-P-P-Y, happy. Sad, S A D, okay. Um, we might have funny, funny could be a feeling, F U N N Y, okay. Um, scared might be how we're feeling or afraid. I'm gonna spell scared, S C A R E D. We might be mad or angry, M A D, okay. Um, we might be disgusted. I know at most kids y'all's age will always bring up that word because you've seen inside out. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it. D-I-S-G-U-S-T, disgust, okay? So those are some words that we might be experiencing right now, okay? And even some of you might be tired or sleepy, okay? So T I R E. D for tired, and I know a lot of you are home for a very, very long time and you're not used to it. So I'm gonna spell out the word bored, B-O-R-E-D. Okay, so these are some basic feelings that we might be experiencing right now, okay? But there are some other words that I want us to think about and focus on while we're at home, okay? So it's good to feel happy. Sometimes we feel sad and that's okay. It's good to feel um, like you're having fun, but sometimes feeling funny can be weird. Um, it's okay to be scared, all right? I know that's not fun, but it's okay to be scared or mad or disgusted. Um, it's okay to be tired and it's definitely okay to be bored. Let's just try to find some things for us to do, okay? 
But there's some other words that I want us to think about, okay? There's a word called hope, H-O-P-E. There's a word called calm, C-A-L-M. Safe, S-A-F-E. There's a word called joy, J-O-Y. There's a word called care, C-A-R-E. And there's a word called kind, K-I-N-D. Okay, so we're gonna focus on these words first, and then we're gonna go to those words. Now, I want you to think about a glass of water or a glass of milk, okay? You guys are gonna learn about fractions in third or fourth grade, but thinking about a glass of water or a glass of milk, if your glass is half full, can you picture what that would look like? Or if I said you have a little bit of milk in your glass, what would that look like? Okay, let's think about what that would look like in our jar, okay? If we had a little bit of something in our jar, then we might do it about right here. We'd have a little bit. If we had a half jar of something, like half a glass of milk, it would come to about right here. Do you see how that's about halfway through your jar? Now, if you had something that was almost your whole jar, it might be close to up here, okay? Now, think about layers, like layers of cake or layers of paint or layers of dirt, okay? So if we think about layers, I think it's easiest to think about them with cake, okay? They stack on top of each other, okay? If you poured sand into a jar, um, you could maybe pour in this much sand. And then you could pour in some dirt. Now the sand would be a really light color, and then the dirt would be a darker color. And then after that, maybe you poured in some snow, and that would be white, okay? And outside the jar, we could see those three different layers. We are going to do the same thing with these little emotions, okay? So I'm going to think about how I've been feeling, all right? And I'm gonna put these emotions inside this jar. But um, if your amounts are different, then your lines won't be where my lines are, okay? Now I'm gonna start with the word happy. I've been feeling pretty happy, okay? Now I am gonna use this whole jar for all of these words. So even though I'm feeling very happy, I don't wanna make the whole jar happy because I'm gonna add in some other things too but I've been feeling pretty happy. So I'm gonna do, I am doing a large amount, okay? I'm gonna make this much of my jar happy, okay? I'm feeling pretty happy. Sad, is there anything I'm feeling sad about? Well, I'm sad that I can't see you guys, okay? I am pretty happy though, so not about not seeing you guys. I'm just sad that I can't see you, but I am happy because I get to spend a lot of time with my family. Um, I'm trying to stay positive, those types of things. But I am sad that I don't get to see you guys. I don't get to see my family. Um, I love going to movies and I can't go see movies. There are things to be sad about and that's okay. Now funny, now I'm not feeling very funny in particular, but I do like to have a lot of fun. So I'm gonna do a layer just for fun, okay? So you can see, like I said, I'm pretty darn happy. So my happy is bigger than my sad and my fun. Scared, now that's a good word. A lot of people are feeling really scared right now about a lot of things. And if you're not, that's awesome. I'm so glad for you. I can tell you that I'm a little bit worried about the effects that all of this is going to have. So I'm gonna put scared um, on here, but not very much. I am a little scared though, so I want a little bit, all right? Now I'm mad. I'm not really mad about anything, so I'm not gonna put it in my jar, but if you are mad about something, then you can definitely put a layer in there for mad, as big or as little, depending on how mad you are. Disgust. Now y'all, it is June bug season. I don't know if you've noticed that, if you've seen June bugs outside, but I have, and I hate June bugs, and I think they're so gross. So I am gonna do a layer for disgust because I hate June bugs so, so much and they fly and it's the worst. Now, tired, I feel like I've been getting more sleep than normal, so I haven't been sleepy, but staring at the computer so much can make you pretty tired. So I am going to put a small amount of tired on there. And then bored, I haven't really been bored. I'm not someone that gets bored. I will read books or draw pictures or watch a show or make up something. Um, I'm not really someone that gets bored, but if you are bored, you can totally add a layer for bored. If you're super bored, you maybe want a big layer like I did for happy. If you're only a little bored, then maybe a really small one like I did for scared. Now, 
I want us to talk about these words that are right here, okay? Even though we might be experiencing all of these things, and some of you might be really scared, really sad, and really mad, and really bored, and that's okay. I'm not going to tell you how to feel, okay? But I do want you to think about hope, calm, safe, joy, care, and kind, okay? So hope means that even though we're experiencing something really hard, we try to remember that things will hopefully get better. So if we focus on having hope, knowing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, this will end at some point, we won't be in here forever, um, having that can help you get through the hard times. Now I have a lot of hope, okay? I know I put a little bit scared on here, but I am trying to be super hopeful. So I'm gonna put a big amount of hope inside my jar. I think that hope is really important and it's good for us to have it. So with these words right here, even if you haven't been experiencing them or feeling them before this video, let's remember that we can choose to remember and feel them now. And let's say, even if you haven't thought any of these things before today, let's go ahead and use the rest of our jar to put these things in it so that we can remember to have these words, okay? So calm. Calm means like a kind of stillness. Even though things are really crazy or really different, having a sense of calm means that it's peaceful. Um, you, if you're really mad, that means you're not like punching walls or throwing over furniture or hitting anybody. Choosing to be calm when you're angry means that you take deep breaths and you express how you're feeling in a way that doesn't hurt anyone, okay? Now on the flip side, you could be so happy that you're jumping off the walls and you know throwing confetti everywhere and lighting off fireworks and stuff. Now those things definitely have a time and a place. I know some of you have experienced some birthdays, which is awesome, but we can't be that crazy every single day. So choosing to be calm, even though we're unbelievably excited, means that we slow down and we make sure that we get what we're supposed to get done, done and that we don't drive our parents crazy. So calm is really good. So I'm gonna put some calm in my jar. Now, safe is when you feel like you're being taken care of. Now, this situation where we're all staying home and not in school is so that we're all going to be safe, okay? It's our way of taking care of you in the way that the state of Texas is taking care of us students and teachers, okay? So someone's taking care of us and thinking that and making sure that we are safe by staying home. So we're all experiencing some safety. I'm running out of room. Mrs. Took's got a lot of feelings. Joy is beyond happiness. So even if I'm sad, I can choose to feel joyful or be joyful. Having joy in my life means that even though I might be sad or mad or scared, I don't let those feelings affect who I am. I choose to be joyful in all things. Does that make sense? So even though I might not be particularly happy one day, I am happy with my life as a whole, even if things are really hard. So I have a sense of joy, even though that might be, you know, even though things might be not so great. So I'm gonna put some joy in there. Care. So someone's taking care of you, I hope, and you are taking care of things that you need to do. So you might be helping with chores or housework, taking care of pets, but you're definitely taking care of your assignments if you're watching this video, so that's good. So we all have some care, whether that means someone's taking care of us or we're taking care of some things. And then kind. So being kind to someone is when you are not just nice, but this means that you use your words to encourage them and lift them up. You are not mean to them, even if you're mad at them. Um, this means that you might help them. You might give them a hug. You might spend some time with your younger brother or sister, even though they've been getting on your nerves lately because they know, or because you know, they like to spend time with you, something like that. Or maybe helping out your parents. Um, something like that. You know, there's so many things you can do to be nice to someone, okay? But being nice just means, you know, not being mean, I think. But being kind means being intentional and going out of your way to make someone else happy. And I'm going to fill up the rest of my jar with the word kind, okay? Now, if you're still working on this, you can pause the video. But now what we're going to do is think about colors that would go with these different words, okay? So, in the book, they talked about how different colors represented different feelings, okay? Now, to some extent, um, 
things will always mean certain things um, because things have been going on for thousands of years. For example, the color purple um, has always represented royalty. Um, hundreds of years ago, getting purple dye or like purple paint basically um, was really hard. It was really rare, so it was very expensive. So only very, very, very rich people could get purple stuff. And so purple became a sign of wealth, like having a lot of money or gold or being royal, like a king or queen. So nowadays, purple can still mean royalty or um, like light purple, you guys know that's one of my favorite colors, um, can be very calming. Um, and that's because of the plant lavender. Lavender is a calming plant. Um, even in medieval times, they used plants um, as types of medicine and um, they used them to heal different things. And lavender is something that helps you sleep and um, the scent of it is just a very calming smell. And so I love lavender, it's one of my favorite smells and it's one of my favorite colors um, because it's a very calming and peaceful one. Um, another example, red. So red usually means one of two things. A lot of you, the first thing you probably think of is anger because you've seen Inside Out and even in the book um, that we just read, The Color Monster, they used red for anger. But red can also be something else. Think about Valentine's Day, okay? Red can mean love. I think of red as a color of passion because it can mean anger, which is a really passionate emotion, or love, which is a really passionate decision you've made to be kind to someone no matter what. So colors, some of them always represent something. But then other times, for example, the word safe, that might mean um, blue to you and purple to somebody else, okay? So just think about what colors you would associate with these words. I'm gonna go ahead and put little color swatches next to each one. I don't want this video to go too long, so I'm not gonna color the whole thing with you guys, but you guys can totally color it on your own at home. But I do want you to see what colors I choose for my words, because that might help your brain get going. Now, when I think happy, I definitely think of yellow. Okay, I love yellow. I think it's such a happy color. Okay, it's very bright like the sun and that's why I think that. Now, when I think of sad, um, I might think, honestly, I love the color black, but a really dark color. My blue is like a bright, happy blue, so I don't wanna use it for sad, um, but black, like darkness and grief. Um, fun, um, I think pink is such a fun color. That might look red on camera, but it's pink. Um, scared, um, if I think of being scared, I might do gray, because when I picture myself scared, I imagine myself like hiding in the dark, <laughs> so that might be why. Um, a lot of you might choose green for disgust because of the movie Inside Out, but I'm gonna choose orange. Now here is a fun art fact for you. I'm sorry if your favorite color is orange, but orange is actually the most universally disliked color. Blue is the most loved color. So if you ever get into advertising or if you ever start a business, you don't wanna use orange as your main color because even if you like it, most people don't. Now I love sunset orange. I think it's so pretty, but when I just think of disgust, that's what I think of because I know that fact. Um, tired, I'm gonna use gray again because gray, like, you know when you're tired and just everything's blah, I'm gonna use gray for that. Um, for hope, I'm gonna use yellow again because I think of a bright light when I think of hope. For calm, I'm going to use purple because like I said, light purple, like that lavender color is a calming one to me. For safe, I'm gonna use blue. For joy, I'm gonna use yellow again like I did for happy and hope. For care, I'm gonna use blue for safe and care. For some reason, I just think of blue. I'd love to know what color you think of. And then for kind, I'm gonna use green because when I think of kind, I think about like growth and like fostering growth. And I think being kind to people helps people grow and it shows that we have grown. So what I want you to do is go ahead and fill up your jar with those words that we went over. You can rewind the video if you need to. And outside of that, then I want you to go in and add color if you can. I hope you guys are having a great day.